time to play the game Time to play the game <laughs> It's all about the game And how you play it It's all about control And if you can take it It's all about your debt And if you can pay it It's all about pain And who's gonna make it I am the game You don't wanna play me I am control No way you can shake me I am heavy debt No way you can pay me I am the pain And I know you can't take me Look over your shoulder Ready to run We are here this morning with uh, Fort Francis uh, coach uh, Wayne Strahan How are you today Wayne? I'm good, Jay. Thanks. How are you? Good, good. Been like I say for for the Fort Francis Lakers. It's been a tough couple of weeks with uh, like you say uh, with opponents and um, like I say the biggest thing is for for your games uh, in the last couple of weeks have been uh, against. Oh, sorry, I apologize. Three games against uh, the top team in the country, um, the Thief River Norski uh, Falls Norskis. Is that uh, hard on the schedule when you're meeting a team like that? Well, it's definitely tough. They're uh, a team that's uh, playing very well, uh, have uh, um, numerous guys carrying them offensively, and and they have uh, great goaltending in uh, both goaltenders. And um, you know, if you're if you're not uh, prepared, and and in two of those hockey games, we kind of gave the game to them in the first period of just not being ready. And um, in the third game, I thought uh, we deserved uh, a better fate. We played uh, probably maybe arguably our best game of the the season and um, good enough to win. But we, you know, uh, in the end, uh, some discipline uh, hurt us and uh, maybe some outside factors and, um, disputed goals and, and whatnot also but uh they're definitely a, a good hockey team and and uh deserving of all the accolades that they've they've got early in the season and and like i said if you're not ready to play them uh, they can hurt you uh with their dangerous offense and it, it's tough to score on them once they got a lead and this this past week like so you had three games scheduled one was postponed with dryden because of weather and the one against North Bay, uh, sorry, North Bay, Thunder Bay, and um, and and the Ear River and Red Lake, uh, you guys were outscored, uh, like I say, eighteen to three. Is that just showing, like I say, just things need to change uh, in in the roster or the lineup or the way things are happening or stuff like that? Um. Well, definitely, two hockey games you'd you'd like to forget about, and um, the first game against Thunder Bay. Uh, I didn't think that we played a too bad of a first period, but then um, you know got outworked badly, and and um, you know they filled the net on us. Uh, it was somewhat of a, a dismal effort. Um, and then Tuesday night uh, in uh, Red Lake against the Miners, we jump out to an early lead on the power play and. You know that's probably our first power play goal in in uh, five or six games, and um, and from there uh, again we just uh, got all worked and and uh, mental mental mistakes and the the same errors that we've uh, talked about all season um, with uh, with our defensive play are, are still hurting us, and um, you know the. The personnel we have, we believe in, um, but they're at some point they they need to care enough and and have that uh, pride in the, in our game and especially our defensive game to to make those mental changes and and work at them hard in practice and you know we watch and watch them in practice and and things seem to be improving but in the games. Uh, um, they're not, and it's just, you know, simple things like getting pucks out of our zone, uh, tying up guys or boxing out guys in front of the net, picking up your coverage away from the puck and, and not being puck-focused. And, um, you know, if it was if it was just our, uh, our new guys that were doing it, uh, um, 
you know, you can live with the process that you you have to continue to to help them learn the game, but but it's veteran players as well and at some point you have to I guess evaluate uh your roster and and that's what we're doing at this time and um we're going to make a uh a trade today that um sends a player out I guess but uh and I can I'll announce that later today but um we're definitely in the mode that uh we feel we need to get better in certain areas and and that's what we're going to try and do and that's like you say with 26 players on the ro- your active roster right now like you say nine of them are rookies and between the four rookies, they got 20 goals and 19 assists. And for your season totals, you're at 51 goals and 80 assists. So, so those nine rookies are producing, but especially those four rookies are are almost half of uh, half your goals and one fourth of your assists. So, those f- four rookies are really uh, are, are I guess are working at at the top of the roster for you right now. For sure, and you know we we needed to replace. Uh some uh some of our top forwards from last year and and we f- we feel we've done a good job in in guys like Nick Lucas, uh Jaden Ness and um like you mentioned they're they're definitely uh uh players that have helped the cause and and that's I guess that's what you not necessarily expect but you need in in yearly turnover and um, you try and find those guys that can can uh, improve your team and and bring it to the next level. And um, with those guys, I think we've done a good job. Um, but I guess we need we need more out of uh, some of our vets. Um, and we'll we'll return a, a veteran defenseman this weekend that uh, is very much needed and. And that'll help, and um, a couple other, couple other injuries that uh, our regulars in our lineup will also return for tomorrow night. So um, things like that definitely help. But we do need more production from all, I guess, through the lineup, and and not have to rely on certain guys on a nightly basis. And, and we, we were talking, we were talking off air last uh, in the last couple of weeks, and you have Carter and uh, Asher. Um Journey in the roster being being brothers. Now, when I know like I said, being a father myself and you too, and like I say having having brothers on a roster, how does how, how does that work when it comes to chemistry? Um, I, th- I think at this point, and, and you know, last time we talked, Carter had just uh, somewhat joined the team, and um, Asher has been here since the beginning, and um, you know through. Throughout the process, uh, you know they seem they seem to be a little bit tough on one another at times, and and you know if if one needs uh, some improvement in one area or or maybe does does something that uh, isn't warranted, um, they're kind of vocal at each other, which is probably a, a family trait that. <laughs> most families have at, at the, those points and, brothers, yep. <laughs> um but you know the they get along uh i believe they're now they're now living together with uh um some of the juggling we've had to do with billet families and um no you can see that that they uh they have some chemistry we've we've even tried to play them together to um help asher's game a little bit and um carter's currently out with uh a suspension but um it could be something that we definitely look at uh in the future to to see if um it works and and, you know brothers tend to know each other and and get along for the most part so um that could be something that uh, could definitely help the team in the future. Well, and like I say, and I use with my, my boys, they're 19 and 23, and there's always brotherly competition and everything else. And in the long run, if it's not affecting the chemistry of the team, a lot of times it can help the team, right? For sure. And, you know, obviously there's going to be that little rivalry between the siblings. And um, like you said, if, it, if it's a good competitive uh um, fun kind of atmosphere between them. Um, it, it generally does help. Uh, if it if it gets to be more nagging, then it it could be a 
uh, a little bit of a, a problem for the team, but uh, I haven't seen that yet. And um, you know, both uh, come from a good family, and and uh, so I don't foresee that happening um, at all. And this question here, and this one, like say, putting you on the spot a little bit, and not putting the pressure on the goaltending, but the league average right now is three point uh, three three for goal goals against, and for you guys right now, you're sitting at point four six. Now, is that a cause of concern in the second month of the season so far? Uh for sure, for sure. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't beat around the bush about it. Um, you know, we. We believe in the guys we have here, but obviously it's a, you know, you lose five games in a row and um, especially giving up 18 in the last two losses um, in, and in watching, I guess, game film or, or some of the goals, uh, there's definitely uh, a need where we need our goaltending a little more intense. Um you know, are all the goals their fault? Uh, of course not. Uh, um, they're kind of the last line of defense at times, and um, when the other five guys uh, maybe aren't working hard or or getting the job done in front of them, it, it puts them in bad bad situations and and a lot on their shoulders. So um, I can't totally fault them, um, but I do I do believe that. Some of the goals uh, they would like back, and and if they have that fight and battle in them, uh, um, they would definitely uh, realize that they their goals that we need stopped uh, in hockey games to help us win. And um, some of the close games we've we've lost. Uh, um, I hate to say it, but um, we have been out goaltended at times uh, during those hockey games. And like they say, in the last five games, you've been like say I'll score twenty nine to eight, but it's not a you have twenty three other guys on the roster, and not not all of those twenty nine goals have come from a two hundred foot shot. So it takes it takes the opposition to go through five players before they hit the goaltenders, right? For sure, um, and I guess you know, kind of evaluating it uh, as a coaching staff and. And even furthering that in in discussing some stuff with uh, veteran players um, as a whole, uh, I think we need everyone on the same page, and and we might not have that right now, and that's veterans included, and and you know we need to send a strong message that um, when teams are divided, um, it doesn't work, and and I think our last. Uh, Two games for sure have proven that, and um, you know, you lose five games in a row. There, there's definitely concern in the in the coach's office and and whatnot, and um, you have to find ways to uh, find solutions to it. So you you do your you do your research and and you find out uh, maybe where you need changes and. Who cares who who wants to be here and who wants to battle through this? Um, and you know nothing's uh, nothing's finalized right now, and nothing definitely uh, uh, no one's won the league so far. So anything can happen uh, between now and uh, March seventeenth or eighteenth, whenever the season ends. To, to put you in a situation to have success in the playoffs. So that's our goal. And we knew it was going to be a process uh, um, throughout the year. And um, we're sticking to our plan. And, and we're going to forge ahead to get better here and, and continue to strive to to reach our goal of winning the SIJHL. Exactly. And that's what we're, we're talking early early November. And you still have four, four and a half months, uh, like say, left in the season. And Going into this weekend, you so you only have one game against uh, um, the Iron Rangers at home on the tenth, and then you have another week off before you meet Thunder Bay and Dryden. So, so again, there's always time, like you say, to before you have a chance to raise that trophy to to do what you have to do, right? For sure, and I I think it, a lot of it in our situation right now comes down to uh, certain veterans being positive leaders and and. Um, 
you know, grabbing the younger guys and saying, hey, let's go to the gym or, you know, let's uh, let's do the right things to, to help the team prepare for, for our game this week. And um, it's also certain younger players or first-year guys that uh, need to realize, you know, they're not in AAA midget anymore or high school or, or junior pre or wherever they came from. And, and it's a grind now. And junior A is obviously a, a tougher schedule, a tougher environment. And, and if you're not dedicated to, um, I guess, uh, being focused in and, and realizing why you're here, it makes it a lot tougher to, be at this level and it doesn't matter if you're in the SIJHL or or in any league uh, across North America if you're not uh, dedicated to yourself in the program then um, you're going to find it tough to, to stay at this level and I think that needs to come to fruit in a lot of uh, our younger guys' minds and, and realize that uh, if they love the game of hockey that much and they want to be a part of something special, whether it's here or anywhere, um, then uh, they have to be dedicated and, and get the job done. And that's and that's a, and that goes and that's what I'm finding all, all over when it comes to to junior A hockey. It's not just the Fort Francis Lakers. It's it's junior hockey at all all over, and it's not just and I, maybe not just 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 hockey. Is this age group is like you say when it comes to putting their mind to something, it's something. Some now they got to realize if this is what you want to be part of your life, you really got to like you say put your nose to uh, the grindstone and uh, work to what you want to get. Right. For sure, and you know if you if you compare p- compare it to life in general, and um, you know if you have a job and and you're not performing to your ability or your expectations, uh, the likelihood that you're not going to have that job isn't isn't uh, reality. You know your bosses are going to have to make decisions, so it's a it's a life lesson, a life skill, and um, you know if you want to be successful in sports or successful in in your your everyday life, if you don't. Uh, have respect for yourself and and dedicate yourself to the the things that you want to do or things that you want to achieve your goals then um, you're gonna have a tough tough road ahead of you and I think that realization needs to to happen for us and and it can't happen in a, a month or two months it's gonna happen shortly here to to uh, get us on the right track and um, I don't. I don't believe we're a uh, uh, five-nine, one-and-one hockey team. I. I think that we're uh, we're definitely better uh, in achieving more, and but we have to realize that and, and put our nose to the grindstone and and get it done. Well, Wayne, thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow night against uh, Minnesota at home, and uh, we'll talk very soon. Okay, uh, thank you, Jay, and. Look forward to our next talk. Thank you.